All right, I gotta admit it, I really don't like painting. And that's why I try everything in my power to make it fast and less messy. To that end, I've come up with my dip and dry method. Basically, you dip the pieces in paint, you wipe off the excess, and you put them on some foil to dry. Now, you don't have to use this method if you don't want to. You can always just put it on, brush it on normally like you would with a, a sponge brush. But there is an advantage to this in time savings and also in the fact that the paint gets into every little nook and cranny so your pieces are a little stronger. So uh, let's get started. First, we're gonna mix up the quick coat mixture. And you can use like something like a salsa jar or a tomato sauce jar, or you can use the squeeze bottles from Dollar Tree, which are two for a buck. Basically, you wanna put the mixture into a container that has a tight seal on the top. If you do that, this mixture can sit around for months and you can use it over time. And it's just, it's very easy to make. It's, it's made out of equal parts of water, tight bond, and acrylic paint and you just put them into your vessel, whether that's your jar or, or one of these squeeze bottles, and you just put equal parts of the Type Bond acrylic paint and water. And once you have all the parts in there, you're just gonna seal it up tight. And I like to on these squeeze bottles to hold the, the uh, at top of it when I shake it. And you'll notice it's not completely mixed when I finish shaking. It never really will be the first time for some reason, but that right there is good enough. It just, that type bond loves to cling to the sides of the, of the squeeze bottle. And then we're gonna need to protect the surface we work on because we don't wanna get paint on it. Uh, the in most inexpensive method that I've found is just to use some tin foil. Uh, I kind of wrap it up so it's seamed together. Now keep in mind that this is not a 100% insurance that you won't get paint on the surface that is underneath the tin foil. So if you're doing this on something you do not want to get paint on, you need to take better precautions than just a sheet of tin foil. But since I'm doing this on top of a, my work surface, I don't really care if I get paint on it. So I'm going to use this tin foil and that'll be plenty good for me. It also makes the, the cleanup really easy. And since tin foil is recyclable, since it's aluminum, um, I don't feel bad about putting this and throwing it away and, and putting it out for recycling. And then you need one sponge brush and you're just gonna need your paint mixture. And I usually put on a spray on a little bit there. You can also just pour it out of your jar if you're using a jar. And I start by thoroughly trying to get that paint in the gutters between the squares. And I do that and I make that my priority because that is what's gonna keep those squares fused together and glued onto the base. And it's super easy just to paint the top. You just really just stroke it over with the, with the sponge brush and it takes like, you know, a minute. Then I also turn the tile uh, in the quarter turn to make sure that I didn't miss any spots. Sometimes from your point of view, it's hard to see certain areas. So just turning it to make sure you didn't miss anything is a good idea. And then we're gonna set that aside to dry. Then we'll do the same procedure for the ground tile. Again, we're gonna prioritize getting all those gutters thoroughly painted to make sure that we get that paint glue mixture into those seams to make sure those squares are nice and fused onto the grid square. And you'll notice you don't need a whole lot of paint. Uh, it actually spreads pretty well. Uh, since it's sort of the consistency of, I don't know, some, somewhere between water and milk, it uh, flows really well and covers a whole lot of foam. You can see here, like this is basically a brush that I just, I'm just spreading what was already on the tile and it goes a long way. And I'm gonna do the same thing here that I did on the small tile. I'm gonna turn it and make sure that I didn't miss any spots. Turning and looking at it from a different angle is always a good idea because you'll, you'll find places you missed for sure. And while these are drying, we're gonna paint the other pieces. So we're gonna start with making a little tub that we're gonna dip the pieces into. Now I like to line it in tin foil because it makes it a lot easier to clean up later. Um, you can use anything here. Like I've used disposable like takeout containers from like Chinese food and Thai. Um, anything that's gonna be big enough for you to dip 
the four square wide wall in. And then you just pour in your, your paint glue water mixture. Now here we're making some drying racks. Basically it's just loosely crumpled up foil. And the idea behind this is we're gonna lay the pieces that are drying onto this. So what'll happen is if any paint drips off, it won't pool underneath the piece and give you a big splotchy blotch on there. It'll, it'll pool into the little crevices in our drying rack. Now, I don't like to get paint on my fingers, so what I do is I generally only dip one side and then hold the unpainted side so I, you know, I get a minimal amount of paint on my fingers. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll lay them down, have that side dry for like 30 minutes, and then I'll do the other side. Now, you want to dip it and then take your sponge brush and wipe off the excess paint, making sure that the inside ridge there where all the, the different pieces of foam meet are well and uh, thoroughly soaked in the paint. And you just do the same procedure for all the walls. And you'll notice there, there's a little bit of blotchiness on that one end of that piece. You can just go back and, and kind of wipe that off with your sponge brush. Sometimes you'll also notice, you know, like a few minutes after you've laid them down to, to dry, you'll notice there's gonna be some splotchy parts. You can just go back and wipe them, smooth them out with the, uh, the sponge brush. And this is really great too. This dipping method is really great for the connectors because it really soaks up all those connection points between all the different pieces of foam, making the piece itself very durable. So after you've let these dry for about 30 minutes, they won't be completely dry, but they'll be dry enough for you to handle to dip the other areas of the pieces that you didn't get to put paint on the first time. And while those are drying, you can go ahead and start trimming off the grid tiles. And uh, you'll notice here I'm making a little helper piece here because on this grid tile here, I want to have a border that will be two pieces of foam board wide. And that's because if you want to put a connector on the edge of this grid tile, you want it to be flush with the edge. Because this is a kind of grid tile that I wouldn't put on the ground in my setup, so it would probably be like the floor or a ledge in a building. And it looks best if you have the edge flush with the connectors. And you want to line up that cut, and then you're going to cut gently several shallow strokes. And you're gonna do that for each side. Just put up your little guide, make a knife mark, and then cut along the knife marks. So you can see here that since we've made that border two pieces of foam thick, it fits perfectly flush to the edge of our connectors. Now for our big 20 inch by 20 inch ground tile, that is gonna be something that's gonna sit on the table itself. So we wanna make sure that if we make more ground tiles, they will fit and, and jut up against this ground tile really well. And it just so happens that the grid tile jig is perfect to make this mark because if you put the grid tile jig in the gutter and then lean it over and mark at the end of the grid tile jig, that is exactly the midpoint of the grid squares. So you just put it in the groove and then lean it back so you can get an accurate mark for your cut. And the same idea here, we're just gonna do gentle multiple strokes to cut through all the foam. Now this one's gonna be a little bit more to cut through because you have not only the grid squares on top and the base, but you have two additional sheets of foam board underneath. So make sure you go all the way through. And you'll notice that uh, your utility knife blade will probably be completely submerged into the foam by the time you're cutting through that last piece of foam board underneath.
And same thing. You're gonna put the jig into the grooves, lean it so you can get that mark just right. and then cut along your marks. And there you go. Now you have a border on the outside that's half the width of a grid square. And now we're gonna paint the underside and the edges of our grid square. Why paint the underside? It seals both sides of the tile, so they degas at roughly the same rate, which means that they won't warp. And then do the same to the floor tile, painting the backside and the edges. And after this, you can also touch up all your wall and connector pieces, the parts that you uh, had not painted yet. Now, the nice thing about using this foil liner is you can make a little spout, like a little funnel, to pour back any of the paint that you didn't use makes it easy cleanup and quick. And then all you'd need to do is recycle the aluminum foil and you're done. And then for painting the door, I'll usually do like a nice kind of accent color. Um, and usually for these accent colors, I'll mix up a lot less than I will for things that are gonna cover up entire walls and grid tiles. So I'll use these small squeeze bottles or I'll also use like a small salsa jar. And you can get three of these squeeze bottles for a dollar at Dollar Tree. And then after I'm done painting, I can just pour back what I haven't used into the squeeze bottle, seal it up tight, and it's ready for use down the line. So if you haven't already, you can get started right now on your Terreno journey by downloading the Terreno construction manuals at GameGearMaster.com. They are consistently rated five stars and come with a 14-day hassle-free money-back guarantee. That means if Terreno's not for you, no problem. You'll get your money back, no questions asked. Happy crafting. And a big thank you to my supporters on patreon.com forward slash Game Gear Master. And a shout out to the architects on there who really go above and beyond. Brian Yao and William Dellinger, thank you so much. And apologies if I mispronounced your names. If you'd like to become a patron and get exclusive Trey No products, go to patreon.com forward slash Game Gear Master.